you wrote, uh, along with Paul, a phenomenal book uh, called Endless Universe. And in fact, that's the title of this episode. And uh, I want to ask you, we'll get into all your incredible, uh, uh, delightful work, but that book is a popular book. And I want to ask you, what is the meaning of the title of the book? And what is the cover meant to evoke in the minds of readers? And we'll show a cover over this. So can we please judge your book by its cover? Okay. Um, well, the book was really trying to convey how exciting it is to be able to make models of the entire universe and its entire history, um, and then test those models against real data. Um, and so I'm always very clear to differentiate between theorists, which I call imaginary people, and uh, experimentalists who I call real people. Thank you. And that's a little bit of a joke on uh, complex mathematics where yes. you have real and imaginary numbers. But that's really the way I see things, is that the theorist's job is, is, of course, to benefit from the incredible observations which are made by people like you. Think a lot about them. Try to make mathematical models which fit them and ideally, which make more predictions, which then people like you can check. Um, most, I, I want to emphasize that most of what theorists do is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, And one of the main sort of, in, in my view, most important things about a theorist is they should be willing to recognize when they've gone wrong. Um, put themselves up to scrutiny to test uh, both mathematical and uh, and observational, and if either fail, move on to a better theory. So although that book, I was very excited at the time, we had a theory which was connecting the Big Bang with string theory and a development of string theory called M-theory. I was excited about it at the time, but I have to say, uh, the more I thought about it, the more I doubted its uh, foundations. And so although I was excited about Endless Universe, I've written another book since called The Universe Within that is actually also a popular book, um, which again, tries to give a picture of the, what it's like to think about the universe. But what I'm really excited about now is almost the opposite of what's in The Endless Universe, which is that the point the main point is that observations of the universe made by people like you uh, have revealed something incredible, which is that the universe is unbelievably simple. And by simple, I mean very economical in what it takes to describe it. You just need five numbers. Um, and so far, there's no evidence for anything more than those five numbers. Mm. Whereas when we look at our theories, they, are, they have become unbelievably complex, arcane, with a million assumptions and fixes. And starting about five years ago, um, I basically decided this has all become you know, a bit of a joke, to, to be honest. Uh, what we should be doing is being strongly guided by the data to constructing much simpler models of the universe. And by simpler, I don't mean uh, less precise or vaguer or, or anything like that. I mean that basically we, the evidence is we've been missing something. Um, and I'll, I'll go into detail about what that something is. And once I made this switch, as I said about five years ago, I said, look, I'm just not willing to build these arcane models anymore. Mm. I'm going to be ruthlessly self-critical meaning that I'm not willing to introduce even one extra field into the standard model. Standard model is basically a well-verified well picture of what we know about physics. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna be extremely reluctant even to introduce one new ingredient. By that assumption, I'm just ruling out all the models that have been developed in the 40, in the last 40 years. Everybody's been introducing extra fields, extra particles, extra dimensions. You know, and what did we end up with? We ended up with the multiverse, which is the least predictive theory ever. 
Okay. And uh, well, most predictive. <laughs> well, it predicts, yeah, it predicts the most, but it's, it's, the, it's the least testable, let's say. Mm -hmm. Whereas the evidence, both on the very large scale and on the very small scale, has gone in the opposite direction. So the Large Hadron Collider, you know, the great, greatest experiment ever built, discovered the Higgs boson and absolutely nothing else, <laughs> okay? So most theorists like me, 99% of theorists are extremely disappointed at that result. Oh my God, everything we've done for the last 40 years has led to nothing. There's just no extra particle to be found. And uh, I'm exactly the opposite. What my interpretation is that nature is, has been smarter than we have been. And nature figured out how to get away with just having the bare minimum, you know, the Higgs boson, which is necessary to make uh, standard physics work, and no more. So on the tiniest scale, we have this surprising economy in the laws of physics. On the larger scale, it's the same thing. The Planck satellite, uh, subsequent experiments, uh, your uh, forthcoming very exciting experiment with the Simons Observatory. You know, so far, these have re revealed nothing new. Uh, that's not bad. That's, that's a huge challenge for fundamental physics. It says to us, maybe we're working on, on you know, a questionable set of assumptions. <laughs> <laughs>